Hello everyone, it's Mimi again from Mimi's Worms. And today I just wanted to start back as basic. Um, I'm going to be doing this uh, series of getting your worm bin, getting it started, and then following um, that worm bin for uh, six or eight weeks. Um, maybe longer, we'll see. But the first thing you need to do is just get you a, a bin, a pan. It can be a bus pan, it can be a mortar tray, it can be a, a, a smaller pan, it can be a uh, any kind of uh, plastic bin. It can be old tire. We're just going to go with this kind of bin because I can really get off on a, a long tangent of things that you can use. And we'll we'll do that one day in our um, one of our presentations because there's so many things that you can use for a worm bin. Um, but Dollar Tree has these little pans for a dollar and a quarter. So um, if you really want to go cheap... Um, so, the first thing that you want to do, like I said, is get you a pan. I do not drill holes in mine because I don't put anything on the top of this. I also don't put too much water in here. Um, that's the biggest thing is you don't want any standing water. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is decide how you, how you want bed, what bedding you want to use. And so, I'm going to show you some different things that you can use. So, we have a slurry of egg cartons, cardboard, and I just put this in a big 55 gallon drum and I uh, make a slurry out of it. I use a paint stir on a um, drill and I just make this slurry out of it. And you can do that. Um, if you don't wanna do that, you can take egg cartons um, and you can just break these up. Um, these are wet, so I, I can just break them up real easy. And um, you can make that into a slurry. Or you can just, like I said, just break them up. Put them in your, your bin. Um, you don't even have to break them up real small. You can just break them up. But that's very easy to do. It's not hard on your hands if you get them wet. Um, as you can see, they're not dripping wet. They're just wet. And you can just make this nice bedding um, out of these little egg cartons. So, um, you could do that. We, we have cocoa core um, or peat moss if you chose to, to use that. Um, and so, we're going to just use some different things here um, and show you how easy this is to just make a worm bin. It's just so darn simple. People really overthink it. Um, now this is really wet um, because I'm raising worms. This is if you want vermiculture, which is the raising of the worms. Now, if you wanted to do vermicomposting, you may not want your bin to be as wet as I'm, I'm gonna make mine. But either way, the worms will survive and you will be just fine. See, this cardboard here has a lot of water in it, but it holds that water so that water is not standing. And that's what you don't want. You don't want standing water. So, because I know this cardboard is going to hold the moisture and not... Um, I've already let it, you know, drain out my strainer here, so I know that it's not dripping water anymore. Now, this coconut core, I am going to drain some of the water off because I do see that it's standing water in my, my bin here. So I'm going to squeeze that water out, and then I'm just going to put some of this in here and because we're in winter time I'm gonna pretty much fill this bin up to the top uh, pretty much because I need some depth here so they don't freeze on me so this is this is my my starting of my bedding so I've got my bedding in here and that looks 
That looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and put this last little bit in there. But that looks pretty good. I'm not going to mix it around. I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to start in a corner or side or you can do it in the middle if that's what you want to do. But we're going to do it right here in this pocket. I'm going to put me some dry paper down. And then I'm going to add some... These are green stalks, stems, whatever. They're off of uh, some collard greens, it looks like. Um, and I'm going to put them all right here in this little corner. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a... Well, first of all, let me, uh, let, me, let me take some of this out because there is something else that I want to do. I want to show y'all. I'm going to take about half of this out. All right. So we have a product here. This is mushroom compost. And we are going to start selling this. I know a lot of you have a hard time finding mushroom compost. Um... This is, right now, it's really dry, but because this bedding is very wet, I'm just going to put it in here dry, and then I'm going to mix it around. So, I've put me some mushroom compost. Now, I'm going to put some cotton compost, and this is from the cotton gin, and it's just remnants from the cotton gin. It's going to have... Uh, Cotton seed, cotton holes, cotton stems, pieces of cotton. Um, now, you can moisten this before you start to use it. Um, like I said, we're just going to mix this around so that that can get wet. Um, because my, my paper, my um, egg cartons are really wet. So, that'll help. This will soak up some of that moisture. And if I need to, I can add more moisture. And I may do that with some of this off of this um, cocoa core. Now the thing about gin trash is if you make it too deep, it will heat up on you. This is not completely composted down, so the worms really, really like this stuff. It's high in protein. It's really good for the worms, but it can heat up on you. I don't have this in a deep enough bin for it to heat up on me. So those are two of the things that I'm going to use. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add... A little bit of worm castings and this is to inoculate the worm bin this is to get my microbes started and I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the top of the bin the next thing I'm gonna use is oyster shell flour that I'm gonna use about a tablespoon and I'm gonna put that right here over my food scraps and I'm also going to put it just over the top of my worm bin. Now this will do several things. It'll give them some calcium, it'll give them grit, and it will um, help balance your pH. The next thing I'm going to take and do is give them a little bit of worm chow. Now they have a lot of different things already in here with the the coconut core, the the mushroom um, compost, the gin trash, but we're gonna add a little bit more variety to their diet. So we're gonna add a little bit of worm chow um, on the food and then a little bit over the bed, about a tablespoon. The next thing we're gonna do, and that was our worm chow. We, we make that here at Mimi's Worms. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our microbial food. This is another thing that we um, put together here. Now, this is a proprietary 
uh, mixture that we use so we don't actually give out that formula. Um, but you can get that off of our website. And what this does is this feeds your microbes. So we're going to just put a little bit over the entire bin and we're going to put a little bit over that food right there because we want to get those microbes fed and get them really multiplying because that's what the worms actually eat. Now I'm just going to kind of rough that in and I'm going to cover these food scraps with some of that material. The next thing you want to do is let, uh, if, if you're just starting your bin and you, have, you don't have your worms yet, that's great. You need to let this sit about a week. But if you've already got your worms and you're just making the bed and you want to go ahead and put the worms in, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. Either way is fine. The next thing you're going to do is you are going to take and add your worms. And that's the one thing I forgot to get. Hold on. I have a nice worm ball here on a piece of cantaloupe. So we'll just go ahead and use these. Um, these are red wigglers. These are pure red wigglers. And there's probably about a half a pound here. I really like to, to start these bins, this size bin, with about a half a pound of worms. And I believe there's a good half a pound of worms on that um, cantaloupe there. So I'm actually going to stick this under here as well because they really love cantaloupe. So now that's done. My last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to place a worm blanket over the top of this. Now, this serves well in the winter time, but it's also good in the summertime. And what this does is it helps to hold this moisture in and it helps hold that heat in and it just gives your worms a nice snuggly little area to, to do the, to sleep in or to keep them warm. Um, this blanket will be eaten by the worms. It's a jute blanket. Um, they will eventually eat these fibers. It will get moist. You can wet it, you can leave it dry, either way, but it does tend to wind up getting moist anyhow. And you're going to need to um, just know that you'll need to replace that in due time, usually about three to, to six months. That is exactly how you need to set up your worm bin. Don't overthink it, don't make it complicated. Now, um, the next thing that I would have done, and I didn't bring it with me, and I wish I had of, is to put a worm thermometer. Let me grab one. I've got one of my, my older ones here. Ours are a little bit shorter uh, than this. This is one of my old thermometers. But I'm going to just put that in here, and that way I can just kind of keep an eye on that temperature now. Now, because it is winter, um, let me grab, let me wash my hands off real quick. I wanted to show you what we have over here. So right here, I have an established worm bin and I have a, a um, heat seedling blank or uh, mat, and I have this bin of worms sitting on top of this. It has a thermometer. This is what my temperature is inside my worm bin at this time. I just put this on this heat mat this morning, and this is where I have it set. So I have it set at 77 degrees, and right now it is 61 degrees. So right now, 
this is your your thermometer and this heat mat will come on and off as it needs to now what you want to do if you're putting this on on the if you're putting the bin on top of the heat mat you want to put you some little slats here and the reason for that is heat rises so you don't want this bed to dry out really fast and what happens a lot of times on these heat mats is these mats will dry out really fast and you just want to keep them good and moist and having that um, not being directly on the mat helps with that now you also can put this mat on top and you don't have that trouble with um, with it drying out on you. Either way is perfectly fine, whichever you decide to do. Um, but that's what we're doing um, with this. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show y'all that I didn't show you was another way to make bedding. And I need to add some more bedding to this bed anyway. And I've just got some cardboard here that I've had soaking. Um, probably maybe 30 minutes now. So I'm going to take this. It's just real easy to tear if you soak it in water. And that way also it can get wet through and through. Now this didn't get all the way wet because I had some other boxes in here. But wetting your cardboard first really makes it easy to tear. So you can make bedding this way. Um, you don't have to have a shredder. You don't have to have all the fancy gadgets. I never did to start with. So I'm telling you this so that if that's some of the things that hold you back from getting started you can feel assured you don't have to have those things because it's just as easy to rip up some cardboard. Super easy. And there you have it. Now, we could add a worm blanket to this bin. Um, and I probably will go get one because it is winter time and we have been getting really cold. And um, I just want to kind of hold that heat in. And uh, so I didn't bring two of them, so I'll probably go get one and just put on here. And um, there you have it. So now what you're going to do is in about, well, tomorrow, you can take and check your bin. Now, the, the thing is, you don't want to mess with this bin too much. You want to just let your worms acclimate themselves. And so you don't want to, you know, just have your hands in them all the time. But you want to give them time to just kind of work their self in there. Let them go down on their own. Let them figure out where they want to be. And as long as they're seeming to be happy and they're, they're probably not going to really eat much of that food um, right now because they, that's a brand new bed, so they need to get acclimated. So we will probably come back on the camera in about... I don't know, three or four days and check on this bin and see how things are going. I'll share that with you. In the meantime, if you want to uh, go ahead and purchase your worms, make sure you get, look at the bundles because we have the worm chow, the, the microbial food, the oyster shell flour, the blankets, coconut core, th thermometers. A lot of this we have in bundles and you can save money and time. So, that is all we have for now. I do want to make mention that when you support Mimi's Worms, you're not supporting a big corporation. You are supporting a grandmother that wants to leave a legacy for her grandchildren. 
You're supporting a single mother who is Tabitha with three little boys that works her tail off every day. Um, it helps her pay her bills and take care of her boys. My grandson, Kyler, who I started this company for, who is now 16, he'll be graduating in the next couple of years and is wanting to go to college. So that will help, this will help fund his college. And then I also adopted his brother and sister to keep them all together. And so you're helping support and take care of those two as well. So you are supporting a large family here that is not a big corporation. Um, they all work, they all help with it. Even my, my little ones, um, they, put the, uh, they put the stickers on these bags and they earn money for that. So they have money to spend and you know we're teaching them to work and um, when they want something, they have to save their money to, to get that. And um, hopefully they, they'll learn this at a young age to where when they're adults, they will be ready to go to work in the work field, whether it be with Mimi's Worms or something else they choose to do. Um, we hope that, you know, they love the farm as much as I do and um, want to continue on with it and build it and grow. But I just want you to know we are very appreciative for you choosing Mimi's Worms to, to support you with all the needs of your worm bin. But we're also here to help you when you have troubles or if you're trying to set something up, you're not really sure, you're confused, something might have went south, what do you need to do? My phone number is on my website. Call me anytime. I answer my phone most anytime unless I am just knee deep in manure or, um, you know, it's really, really late at night. But by all means, call me. If you guys want a community that is there to help you in your journey, you have come to the right YouTube channel. We would ask that you like, subscribe, and share. It doesn't cost you anything to share our videos or to like our videos, to comment on our videos. If there's some kind of content that you would like for me to make, or you need to understand more about, please put that in the comments um, because that's what I'm here for is to help you guys. I didn't have that when I started out. There was very few YouTube channels that were active at the time and I just really didn't have anybody that I could call at the time and help me. Now I have lots of friends in the, the industry that I can reach out to, but at the time I didn't. And um, so a lot of this I've learned right by myself. So we want to help you be successful in whatever that is. If it's just making some castings for your own garden, wonderful. If it's that you want to be the biggest worm farm in the United States, wonderful. We're here to help you accomplish whatever it is in your journey that you want to do with your worm business or your worm endeavor. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. This is uh, the last day of November of 2023. So if we don't hear from you, we hope your family has a wonderful holiday. And um, you guys, uh, I hope you all the help and love of your family through these holidays. And until next time, have a wonderful day.